Greetings. Today's pen is the Pilot Vanishing Point Fermo. This is a slightly different Pilot Vanishing Point than uh, many of you have probably seen. This is a model that is generally not sold in the U.S. So if you're in the U.S., you typically have to order it from Japan uh, and have it shipped uh, uh, from there. The Vanishing Points that uh, most of us in the U.S. are uh, familiar with is this one right here. So the big difference between the normal Vanishing Point and the Fermo is how you actually open it. So on the normal Vanishing Point, it, it works almost like a traditional clicky ballpoint pen. The fountain pen point comes in and out by pressing this button on the back. The Fermo has a twist to open. So you twist the back and you twist it back to, um, to uh, retract. Now it's got a spring action so when you twist it back you only have to start twisting a little bit and then the spring sort of takes it the rest of the way. So you have a little bit of spring resistance opening and then it closes right back up easily. Uh, comparison to a normal vanishing point is um, it's a it's a little bit heavier actually. The normal vanishing point weighs uh, 34 grams. I'm sorry. Uh, the little normal vanishing point weighs 31 grams, and the Fermo weighs uh, uh, 34 grams. So it's a it's a tiny bit heavier. Um, it is an all metal pen pretty much. Um, the clip also is quite a bit different than the uh, the normal. Uh, vanishing point. Um, this sort of has more of a swooping effect and has a little upturned lip which allows you to clip it a little bit uh, easier. Um, the nibs on these are the standard um, pilot vanishing point nib unit so you can swap them and interchange them. And as a matter of fact that's exactly what I did. This typically does not come with a gold nib so I swapped it out for a gold nib uh, on another vanishing point um, that I had that had a, um, a uh, body that had some damage to it so I just swapped the nib unit uh, the gold nib unit from that one for the steel nib unit that was in um, in this one. Um, in terms of size um, here it is compared to a Lamy Safari and here it is compared to a Pilot Metropolitan and as you can see it's pretty much um, uh, right in the ballpark size wise of these very uh, popular pens. It's, this is a blue lacquered colored one. Um, the uh, twist to turn knob has sort of a nice textured uh, uh, knurling on it where you can uh, grip, grip to turn. It's got nice chrome trim uh, and a chrome finial on the end. The where the section and the body meet are also chrome trimmed. The clip is all chrome and the end where the point uh, extends from is um, also chrome. It would appear to me that the points, uh, the way the point comes out is just about the same distance. If you look compared to the normal vanishing point, look at the breather hole, etc. So it's extending the point pretty much exactly the same amount. Um, you do have the issue that some people don't like. So this is either a love it or hate it kind of thing. So you, when you grip it, the clip is going to be right there where you grip it. Personally, it doesn't bother me at all. I actually kind of like it a little bit. Um, there are some people that actually despise it. They go to the extent where they actually remove the clips from their vanishing points, etc. So this is really a personal preference kind of thing. There's no either either you're going to like it, be indifferent with it, or absolutely have that be a deal breaker for you. And that's really really just a, a sort of a personal uh, personal preference uh, 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 thing. Um, like I said, these are a little bit tricky to get in the US. Uh, once you have it shipped from Japan, it's not particularly more expensive than this pen. So we're talking about $170, $165 to $180 uh, pen. Uh, it's roughly the same, but you're not getting the gold nib on this one. So in that sense, it's probably, I guess you could look at it as the pen being a little bit more expensive because you're getting not quite as nice a nib or certainly not a gold nib for um, a comparably, uh, comparably priced pen. And then you have to wait, in my case, I think I waited about two months for this to arrive from Japan uh, a few years ago. So this is, um, like I said, a little bit hard to get, but um, if you like the normal vanishing point, 
you might like this. Um, this sort of uh, helps mix things up a little bit. One disadvantage that this has over this one is um, obviously on this one, one-handed operation is quite simple. On this one, it's a little tricky. You could get, you could practice and get used to turning the knob with one hand, but it's not the easiest thing in the world. So if you're looking to do it with one-handed operation, say for example, you happen to be somebody with uh, limited mobility in one of your hands or something like that, this is probably not a better ch choice, uh, not the best choice. This is probably definitely a better, a better choice for you. So the one big disadvantage of this one is, is the one-handed operation, while possible, is, um, is definitely trickier. Well, um, I think that is everything we want to say about the outside of the pen. Let's see how this, uh, this guy writes, and we're going to find that out right now. Okay, what we're writing with here today is a pilot, vanishing point, Fermo. So this is uh, the, like I said, the different type of uh, opening and closing mechanism that the normal vanishing point has. Um, this is an extraordinarily smooth uh, nib. This is a fine nib, um, and that's pretty much what it is. Uh, obviously, it's a Japanese pen, so the fine is going to be really fine. Um, but this is probably one of the least feedbacky uh, nibs that I have. Uh, it borders on being almost a little too smooth. It's sort of almost like like slick. Um, it's kind of hard to describe. Um, I do like it. I almost wish it had a tiny bit more feedback. I know it's kind of hard uh, to believe for you people who who may like free feedback free pens, but this, um, I really like the way this writes. Now keep in mind, like I said, this was not the original nib. The original nib was the steel nib. Um, I swapped it out for uh, a gold nib um, unit. So um, take that uh, aspect of it, uh, uh, you know, into consideration. But obviously these are well-known pens. They're famous for writing really well. They're extraordinarily practical uh, as fountain pens uh, go. In terms of uh, filling mechanism, you have a couple of options here. Um, you could use um, uh, uh, Pilot uh, proprietary cartridges, or you could use most Pilot converters. You cannot use the Con 70 in this one. Unfortunately, it will not fit. This is the Con 50, which I believe is not made anymore, so you're kind of stuck with the Con 40 or uh, some of the other older converters, or if you can get um, uh, one off the secondary market, maybe get a Con 50. Pilot converters are not very good. I have to be honest. Um, Pilot makes great pens, but they really need to up their game on the converters. They don't hold a lot of ink. They're they, they're just a little clunky, you know. And, and a lot of people had problems with them. And again, I think that for the level that Pilot manufactures pens. I think uh, their converters really need to, uh, they really need to up the game on the converters. Um, that's not a controversial statement what I'm making. A lot of people are of that, uh, of that same, uh, same opinion. Um, I actually, uh, when you, uh, by the way, when you use this with uh, pilot um, cartridges, there's a metal hood that goes over the cartridge. So the cartridge goes in and then a metal protector goes over it, it which the pen does come, uh, come with that metal protector. Um, and that's basically to protect the cartridge because there's quite a bit of force as the as this is sort of flying back and forth as part of the retraction mechanism and I guess the sort of soft plastic on the converter could get uh, damaged so there is that metal hood that goes over that keep that in mind and don't lose that because if when you get your pen even if you're using with a converter because you don't want to um, you don't want to have to have to go seeking one of those out if you decide to use cartridges but again it's the pilot does use, does use proprietary cartridges, so you no know, standard internationals uh, or anything like that with this pen. So that about covers the pen. Now let's talk about the ink. This ink is Noodler's Bay State Blue. If an ink can be said to be infamous, um, 
I guess it's this one. Um, this is a great ink in terms of the color. So let's let's talk about that for a minute. The color on this is so deep, so saturated, and so vibrant. Uh, if somebody told me this, they tested this, and it turned out that it was radioactive, I, I probably uh, wouldn't be shocked. I mean, this thing is just, the vibrancy on this is just not to be believed. The camera uh, does not do it justice. It is just a positively vivid, vibrant, deep, saturated um, uh, ink. Um, where the problems come in is it stains and it's tricky to clean unless you use bleach. So if you use a bleach solution to clean it off of something, be it your countertop, your sink, a converter, etc., um, uh, you will have a problem. The bleach will work and it will work quite well, but it has to be something that can be bleached. If you get it on a piece of clothing and that clothing cannot be bleached, you're going to probably have uh, a, a problem. So this is a very saturated ink uh, that will that will stain under a lot of circumstances. Another problem that this ink has is that it does have a little bit of a behavior issue. So um, it it does have some bleed through on occasion. So as you can see on this rhodia paper, um, it's okay. It didn't really didn't really bleed through. But now let's look, take a look at. Tomoe River paper. Tomoe River paper is renowned for not having bleed through, despite how thin um, how thin the paper is. So here again, we have base state blue. And this is Tomoe River paper. Um, and as you can see, it's actually just coming through a little bit, which doesn't seem like a lot, but on uh, most other inks you would not um, would not come through at all. So I'm going to give you a contrasting example. So just as a quick demo, this is Pilot Blue Black. Um, on the same paper and if you look at the difference uh, that guy it really doesn't come through at all um, so this is what the typically what you expect almost every other ink to behave on Tom Tomoe River but the base tape blue is is starting to come through so this is a a, a sort of deeply penetrating ink um, and um, depending on what paper you're using it on uh, you may just um, may just want to be be careful. So this pen has sort of a crazy reputation of ruining pens, ruining feeds, things like that, etc. I just want to say I have been using this ink for quite some time. So long in fact that I can't even actually remember in this exact pen, uh, in this pilot vanishing point, feed and nib and converter, and it has not damaged it even slightly. Now the converter here is stained so if i ever want to get that blue color out i probably would have to run a bleach solution through it but you know i'm i'm accepting of that but it hasn't deteriorated the material on the feed it hasn't chewed up the nib it hasn't dissolved um um uh you know my pen or my nib um it hasn't uh, spontaneously burst into flames or any of the other things that um that uh, uh, people claim with uh, uh, problems they've had with Bay State Blue. That's not to say people haven't had problems. I'm not going to say that everybody who claims Bay State Blue has done something horrible to their pen is wrong. I'm just saying that's not been my personal experience and I've been using this for quite some time. Um, and I just think this is such a great color with vibrancy, etc., that it is worth trying out. Would I put it in this vacuum-filled Visconti Homo sapiens that is a hard-to-clean pen and is a pen that cost uh, 700 and some odd dollars? The answer is no, but there's a lot of inks I wouldn't put in this pen. Base Day Blue is just, uh, one, uh, just one of them. Um, so take that into, uh, into consideration. Um, but again, this is a great, great uh, ink. Um, you could even get it in one of these big, giant four and a half ounce 
uh, noodlers bottles so it becomes very economical etc um, one thing and I've said this on other videos those big four and a half ounce bottles are a little problematic if you're using it on anything other than an eyedropper filled pen so what I strongly recommend you do is transfer some into some of these little sample vials and then fill your pen straight out of one of uh, one of these that will work I just think that works uh, that works quite quite uh, quite well okay um, so I hope you like this discussion of the Pilot Vanishing Point Fermo and Noodler's Base State Blue. As always, I welcome any feedback, either positive or negative. Please, please, please subscribe. And until next time, have a good day. Bye-bye.